this time. And Lord, may our gaze be upon Jesus. And everyone who loved the Lord said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. You know, guys, you're just going to couple of photographs up first of all. <clears throat> that over the last few weeks, lots of you <clears throat> haven't been aware. And by the way, welcome. It's so good to see you. I forgot who half of you are. But this is what church was like for the last four or five weeks. We had some of the different ones turn up. It was empty. There was a dozen people. I was preaching at a camera. And, uh, but if it wasn't for these champions here turning up and doing what they'd done, we wouldn't have been able to bring the message uh, to you live on a Sunday morning. So we appreciate it. But it's so good. It's so good to be back. Hey, seriously, this is fantastic. And you know, we got to keep praying that, you know, the things will continue to change and um, that we'll be able to get back where everybody can come together and praise and worship God. But I'm just glad that we can do that. Amen. You know, I was a designated shopper. And because um, I, I like, I don't mind shopping actually, to be honest. But man, I was shopping three times a week just to get out of the house at one time. <laughs> Seriously. And, I, and like us all guys, my ministry did expand quite a bit. I don't know about you, but man, I never had as much as what I did in them few weeks. So um, brilliant. So guys, again, thank you everyone who serves. I mean, that was beautiful this morning, wasn't it? See them in the first service, great time of worship. Just there's something awesome about being together live. You know, we're meant to do life together, eh? So um, it's just so good to have you here. Great to have you online. I don't know what camera I'm meant to look at, but they'll, they'll catch up. But guys, great to have you online. You know, the Spirit of God has been moving online as well. We've heard testimonies of some people getting saved over the last few weeks. Um, some people have had physical healings. Some have had financial breakthrough, etc., etc. Because nothing can stop God. Amen? In fact, I got a, a text from a girl this morning saying that um, I think there's two or three people from the church who work in the business she's in, and there's another job coming up, but her boss came to her and said, listen, is there anybody else in your church we can get to work? Because you, the guys who come from your church are the best workers we've got. Seriously. And, and that's not saying that on the boats and why I look at it, but it's not awesome to hear. I mean, that we should be hearing stuff like that. So that's, that's fantastic, eh? So brilliant. Uh, look, I've just got a little joke for you before I start. Is that all right? I always like to have a little joke, and, and it's good to laugh at your own people. So it's Patty and Mick, the Irishmen. So Mick and Patty were on an airplane. They're halfway through the flight, and Mick said to Patty, Patty, if this plane would turn upside down, do you think we'd fall out? And Mick looks at Patty and says, Patty, don't be stupid. We will always be friends. <laughs> okay, okay, that's, that's all right. You'll get it, you'll get it. Ah, okay. So guys, this message is called, What Has Your Gaze? Now you need to realize something. The word gaze means to steadily, um, intentionally focus on something. Okay? It's mean to make it the center of attraction. Good word here. In the, in the Philippians 4, Paul makes a comment. What to focus on. What to gaze on. Whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is right, whatever is praiseworthy. Look on such things. Does that make sense? And in Psalm 27, 4, King David said, One thing I ask one thing do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Now, King David had realized what the important things were to gaze upon, because remember, unlike us all, he wasn't perfect, but the great thing about him was he had a heart of repentance. Every time he realized he'd done something wrong, King David was amazing, he would come to God, confess his sin and ask for forgiveness. Guys, there's a good tip for us all. When you mess it up somewhere, come humble yourself, come before God. But he had realized what was the important things to gaze upon, seek. Because one of his main sins was when he, when he was on the, his rooftop one day, he looked down into the, someone else's home and Bathsheba was having a bath and he, he gazed upon her. And because of that, he fell into sin. And uh, by the grace of God, he repented, got away from it, but he's telling us, guys, 
one thing I ask, one thing I seek, that I may gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him. Guys, relationship. That's it, relationship. Keep her focus. Lots of things going on today, as we know. And, and I really feel strong that the enemy will use a lot of stuff that's happening to get our focus off Jesus, to get our gaze off the kingdom of God. You know, the kingdom of God is not food and drink. The, food, the, the, the kingdom of God is not medication. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Okay, that's what the kingdom of God is. So with that, interesting thing, Corey... Corey T. Boone, for those who don't know her, she was in a concentration camp for years and her family were all murdered and gassed and stuff like that. And she's seen some amazing, horrific things going on. But she was an awesome woman of faith. She really loved Jesus and she kept her gaze upon Jesus, right? She made this comment. If you look to the world, you will be distressed. If you look into yourself, you will be distressed. The, yep, but if you look gaze on Jesus, you will find rest. Guys, I want to tell you, I want to encourage you. Don't look at the things of the world. Don't look in the south. There's no good stuff there. Focus on Jesus. And in the midst of things that is happening, you can have a supernatural peace of God in your life. You can be at rest. Amen. Amen. You can be at rest. You don't have to die to be at rest. Once Jesus comes into your life, you can be at rest. There's a woman called Helen Lamel, and uh, there's a photograph up here. This song, the last worship song we sung, had been written by that lady in 1922. And it's in a beautiful song. It is a beautiful, beautiful worship song. But listen, that woman who wrote that song, she got married when she was 42, 43, and a few years down the track, she picked up some type of disease which made, meant she went blind. She wrote the song when she was blind, guys. Her husband couldn't handle the situation with her affliction, and he left her. So she was sick with blindness, and she, was, she could have been full of rejection, etc. But she chose to focus and gaze on Jesus. And here's an interesting thing. Here's the first line of that song because we only sing the chorus. Listen to this. It might be on the screen. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Guys, although she was blind, she chose to look at the light. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It says that in him was light, and the light was the life on the old man. Isn't that awesome? So she chose to focus on Jesus, and she didn't get down, and she didn't get depressed. She wrote 500 hymns. And I don't think she would have realized what type of impact she has made on people's lives. This morning, guys, part of what she done enabled us to be able to come in here and worship God from our hearts. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so what I'm trying to say is this. Helen chose not to gaze on the storms, not to gaze on the things that was going on around her. She chose to keep her focus on Jesus. That's my son. I should have answered it, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. I know I shouldn't have. <laughs> okay, so she chose not to focus on the storm and have an attitude about, oh Lord, I'm not well, or my husband's left me and I'm feeling rejected. She stayed focused on Jesus. Church, let me tell you something if it's okay. You're going to face storms. You're going to face certain things at different times. And I'm not prophesying doom and gloom. I've been a Christian now 30 years. We've had different battles at different times, but I want to say something. Every single storm that came, God was with us. Every single single storm that was there, God brought us through. Yeah, were we knocked about a bit on the boat and stuff like that? Would have we preferred not to have the storm? Yes, but I'm going to tell you something now. Honestly, our faith level in Jesus Christ grew. Our confidence in Jesus grew. Why? Because he turned up. And he brought us through the storm. And, and when we say to you at times, you know what? You can come through this. God has got you. We're coming from an angle of, we know he had us. And we know that he loves you every bit as much as he loves us. Does that make sense? But Jesus himself told the disciples, you'll have troubles. 
You'll have things that'll go wrong in this earth, but hey, listen, be at peace because I've overcome the world. In John 16, 33, and Jesus said, and everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and give you great confidence as you rest in me. Wow, how cool is that? See, we gotta rest in him for in this unbelieving world, you will experience, this is from Jesus, troubles and sorrows. Who's, who's the troubles and sorrows? Yeah, we, we, we all have. Seriously, we all have. But you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. You see, guys, courageous is not the absence of fear. It can be, oh, I don't know what's happening, but it's stepping into it. It's stepping in and doing what needs to be done at a time when it needs to be done and trusting God. You know, there's people in Afghanistan, we would have seen a few weeks ago that they were getting thousands and thousands of people out, yeah, because the Taliban has taken over. Do you know that there's Americans who refuse to get out? They refused to come out. They said, no, 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 no. We, we don't want to go anywhere. We're going to stay here because people need to hear the good news about Jesus. Wow. How awesome. Now, are they facing troubles and sorrows? You better believe it. But they chose to stay. And you know what? God's moving. God is moving in those places. Don't look at that stuff and think, oh, the world's doomed. Listen, God is on the move. There's people getting saved here, there, and everywhere. You know, I'm, I'm believing for a great end time harvest as well. I believe that the days we live in, God's saying, hey, have a look, Trev. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. I'm telling you guys, this is a great time to bring hope and to bring help and to bring healing to all those people around you. Amen. Come on. This is not a time to be down and out. Yeah. Gaze on Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Just before I read a passage in the Bible, Jesus hears that his um, cousin John the Baptist gets beheaded. So he's a bit down. Which, is, which makes sense. See, it's okay to be sorry, full, and sad when somebody passes away. So he goes, it says that he, he went to a solitary place and he, and he, and he spent time with, with who? See, his focus wasn't on what happened, John. Yes, he was sad, but he kept his focus on the Father. Yeah? So what happens then? He comes back from being with the Father, and of course, the old disciples, they're in a place where these people uh, wanted food and they had none. And um, they said, Jesus, we got no food. And he does a miracle. Guys, it says it was 15,000 got fed. You're sitting thinking 5,000, aren't you? Yeah, fed the 5,000. He fed 5,000 men. The Bible in those days, when they were writing it, they, they didn't take into account women and children. So I could say there could probably have been 5,000 of each. Right, but, but the thing is, he does a miracle. Then he tells the disciples, get into the boat, go across the lake. So they're heading across the lake and this massive, massive storm comes. Like it wasn't just one meter waves, it was probably five, six meter waves and stuff like that. The, 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 the theologians reckon that they're in the storm for maybe you know, three to six hours. But all of a sudden Jesus decides, see the storm didn't bother Jesus. You know, there was a storm before. Remember, he was sleeping in the boat once and they're freaking out. He's at rest, he's at peace because his gaze is on the Father. But anyway, he walks on the waves and, and he gets close to them and they freak out because they think it's a ghost. And, um, and then, of course, Peter, rough as guts. Lord Jesus, if it is you, call me to come and walk with you. Guys, what a, what a statement that is, hey? So Jesus said, come. So we're gonna pick it up from there. Is that all right? So when Luke or sorry, Matthew 14. It says this from 28, all right? What, okay. Then Peter called, Lord, if it really is you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, he said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong winds and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out, grabbed them and saved them. Oh, you have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed into the boat, the wind stopped. Wow. Here's an interesting thing, guys, right? It wasn't him looking at the wind and the waves that made him sink. He'd already been in the boat, like 
even an Irish man would know this one, that it's not hard to know that I've been looking at these waves and this wind for the last three to four hours. What enabled him to start to sink was he looked at the circumstances and took his eyes off Jesus. Because yeah. while he stayed focused on Jesus, he was sweet, good as gold. So what I'm saying is, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on today, yep, that I believe the enemy is using to distract us to distract us. And I tell you, we need to be stronger now as a family, church, believers. We need to unite and be stronger now than ever, ever before. Don't let the enemy come in. To, you know, the word Satan means separator. The enemy scatters. God gathers. Now, I'm coming to a point here, and you'll see in a minute what, what I'm coming to, right? And I'm coming to the simple fact is there's a lot of fighting over who should get vaccinated and who shouldn't get vaccinated. And some of you are probably sitting, well, pastor, what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's, that's a good question. This is what I think, and I'll challenge you with. Don't let that stuff make you fall out with a brother or sister. Jesus paid a price for us guys on the cross. He didn't pay a price for all on the cross for the, us to be flipping stupid and let this stuff come in because our opinions are different and, and fall out with each other. We need unity, you with me? So here's what I think, and I say this both sides. Have a read at both stuffs. Not every single thing's a conspiracy. Okay, seriously, it's not. Have a look at stuff, but have a look at both sides. Pray about it, and whatever God puts in your heart, do it. Do it. And if you do something different than what I do, I don't care. I love you. Because I done something different, don't make me better than you. I love you. I'm telling you now, some of you said it in the first service, I'm going to marry some of you, and some of you, I'm going to bury you. It's what happens in this sort of work. <laughs> Hi. But, but what I'm saying is this, guys, please stay with me in this one. Please, 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 don't be fighting and falling out. Honor each other. If your opinion's different, I'm cool with that. That's all right. But I'm going to tell you now, some might not like this. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say this to get in your face. If you're uneasy with it, go and pray to God about it. Don't attack the pastor. Don't send me any emails about it because I won't read them. And I'm not being rude. What I'm saying is this, guys. Look, I've read both sides. And you want me to be honest with you? I don't know a real truth. I don't know a truth enough to tell somebody, you better do this. But what I do know is this, God will speak to your heart. Yeah. You with me? Honestly. And I can tell you, whatever you decide to do, I'm going to love you for who you are, not for what you do. And I'm going to tell you something else. Whatever you do or don't do, is not going to take you to hell. I, I need to get that out. I, I'm, oh, some stuff. I, why do we be so flipping plonkers instead of honkers and saying, do you know if you do that? Do you? And look, if somebody does something to die early or something, they're going to be with Jesus. Right? And then let me tell you this, because you're sitting there thinking, well, what have you done? Are you ready for it? It's none of your business. <laughs> and, and I'm being honest with this. Come on, guys. I'm being and I, at the minute anyway, at the minute, I do not feel to tell you when I, whatever I do. It's none of your business. Here's why. You see, pastors have got a lot of influence. And the thing is, because I'm not sure, I don't want to say you better do this, because I'm not sure. I'm still seeking God. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, I'm not freaking out. Well, what somebody done, somebody didn't. I'm not freaking out who I'm beside at the supermarket. I don't like wearing masks, but I'll wear a mask to do the shopping because that's what you got to do. I mean, that's not, wearing a mask is not sin. I, does that make sense? So what I want you to know is this, we love you. I'm praying for you. And, and let me tell you something to you. I know for a fact, this, have a bit of grace in this, guys. I know some people's had to have a jag. And they probably didn't prefer to have it, but they had to because the weeds is working and all that stuff. I've got no right to turn around and say, well, where's your faith? I mean, man, you got to feed your family, your kids. I, I get all that stuff. And don't you dare say to me, if, if I decide to get something, you have no faith. That's a lot of rubbish. Anytime I go to the doctor, I've got faith. If I had no faith in the doctor, I wouldn't go. If you don't believe you're going to get healed, why would you go? Come on. 
But when I tell you, Jesus isn't against doctors and medications, we've seen that last week. When I go anywhere, I pray, Lord Jesus, if I've got to take something, and you can ask my wife, I will hang out as much as I can without doing anything, but the times comes, and, and sometimes I've been too stubborn. I should have went early. But, but I've, I've hung in that, Lord, I'm not, I believe you're going to heal me in this one. And then I've had to go to the docs, and I've said, Lord, whatever I get, I pray that he's got the wisdom to discern what's wrong with me, and he'll give me the right medication to help me. Now, do you see any horns in the head? I haven't grew three arms or anything else. Are you with me in that? Does that mean? So, but guys, let, let me be with you. Please, some of you at times have grace on the opposite. So sometimes the ones who um, are anti some they, they get hammered as well. And, and they've got some good points about the same, but sometimes some people just want to talk them down. Let's not want to talk each other down. Let's just love each other. Let's flip and pray for each other. Let's cheer each other on. And I tell you what, God ain't taken by surprise. He's still on the throne. Amen. Well, give the Lord a clap for that one. Okay. So, we're finishing. So, here's the mark of being a believer. A disciple. You're not called to be a comfort. So I, I'm looking at disciples. I'm looking at people who walk with Jesus, right? I'm looking at people who bring hope and healing and help into people's lives. I'm looking at people who can lay hands on the sick and the sick can recover. I'm looking at people who can lay hands on the sick and cast out demons. I'm looking at people who can speak in new tongues. Are you with me? Because that's a disciple. And here's how we're meant to live. Now, Jesus said, people would know we are his disciples by our love for the doctor. <coughs> no, each other. Yes. Come on. So we're, that's how we're meant. So here we go. Here's how to live. Romans 19, or sorry, Romans 12, 9 to 13. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted one to another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Tell me this. I'm not being rude. If you're organ and fighting your point, is, is, that, is that showing love? I'll move on. Honor one, okay, never be lacking seal. I got plenty of seal. You want some, I'll give you some. Uh, but keep your, keep your spiritual fever, okay, right? Serving the Lord, here we go. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality, verse 16. Live in harmony with one another. Guys, I feel that's a command. Paul's saying, hey, live in harmony, be united. Let, let's unite around the things that really count. You gotta be born again. Jesus is the one who died for your sins. The Bible is the word of God. Let's be united on those things and reach in the lost, amen? So, so let's gather to celebrate the things we have in common. Live in harmony, one Lord. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Well, you're already doing that. Because if you're associating with me, you gotta be fulfilling that part of it. Is that right? <laughs> if it is possible, say to the person beside you, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, this is lovely. This is a lovely word, isn't it? Aye? Isn't it a lovely word? Aye. Live in peace with each other. Wow. So it depends on us. We should be looking at ways to live in peace with one another. And does that make sense? Yeah. Now, it's not my word, it's his word. Here's the thing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Yeah. Proverbs 4, 20. <laughs> my son, attend unto my word. Let the ear listen to what I'm saying. Why? It's life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. Guys, everything we need to know on how to live life, it's there. It's in the Word of God. Now, I've just read you the Word of God about being the foot of each other, do your best to live at peace and stuff. Why? We can do that stuff. We got the Holy Spirit. Yes? So I'm finishing as you get ready. Ah, here's the thing. Don't take your gaze off the... Oh, watch this. Okay? Well done, Mal. That was good teamwork, boys. That was good teamwork. Why did I miss the ball the third time? Because I took my eyes off it. As a goalkeeper, we're trained. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. Keep your eye on the ball. 
Because if you don't keep your eye on the ball, you get distracted, the enemy are going to get a goal. Yeah? So what I'm saying is, I took my eye off the ball. That's why I didn't catch it. I could have caught that easy. <laughs> this is pride kicking in, eh? But we got to keep our focus. Don't drop the ball, guys. Let's keep our focus. Let's keep our focus on Jesus. Let's keep our focus on loving one another. Let's keep our focus on loving those people around us. Let's keep our gaze on bringing healing and hope. Seriously, this is great days we live in. Yeah, even in the midst of troubles and different things, you know, these are great days. So finishing with this, okay. Can I encourage you to this? Set your eyes on the one who knows all things, Jesus. He holds all things and holds us through all things. He supplies all we need for all things. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. As as he's coming, guys, if you read Hebrews 12, a very interesting thing, it says that for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the pain, the shame, and the suffering for us. He knew what was going on, but he could see. Did he have his focus on the Father? He could see that he, by what he was going through and suffering, that that was going to win us eternal life. That was awesome. He didn't let anybody distract him from what he came to do. Let's be the same. Let's pray every day. Lord, give me your grace not to be distracted. Help me to focus on you. Let my gaze be on you, Jesus. Let me bring hope and healing to those around me. In the mighty name of Jesus.